Good morning students. Welcome to SST So Simple Tutorial. Do you know a factory that makes money is called a mint? Do you know numismatics is the study of money? Do you know numismatic also refers to the collection of coins? Do you know apart from English and Hindi which appear on the front side of a note, how many languages appear on the reverse side? Check it. 15. Do you know when was the new rupee sign officially adopted? In 2010. It was designed by D. Uday Kumar. Okay. Today we will start the third chapter of our economics book Money and Credit. Money plays a very important role in our life. I think all of us will agree with me. For every kind of transaction that we make, we use money. When we buy food, fruit, rice, clothes, TV, computer, we make use of money. That means goods are being sold and bought with the use of money. Even for paying the services, for example to the barber, tailor, tutor or a doctor, we need money. That means services are also exchanged with money. And sometimes actual transfer of money also does not take place because we promise to pay sometime later. That means sometimes we also purchase on credit. Now the question arises, why do we make transactions in money? The answer is simple because a person holding money can easily exchange it for any commodity or service that he or she wants. To understand it better, let us see the example given in your book. There is a shoe manufacturer. He wants to sell the shoes in the market and buy wheat. What will he do? He will first exchange shoes with money and then exchange the money for wheat. Now imagine the same case in a society where money is not used. Think the case of barter system used in early civilizations. Bartering did not involve money, but goods and services were exchanged, is it not? So how the transaction will take place? The shoe manufacturer will look for a farmer who not only wants to sell wheat, but also wants to buy shoes. There may be many who will like to sell the wheat, but may not need shoes. You can think the other way. The farmer will also search for a shoemaker who not only wants to sell shoes but also wants to buy wheat, which is very difficult. This situation is called double coincidence of wants. That means what a person desires to sell is exactly what the other wishes to buy. That means both the parties should agree to sell and buy each other's commodities. So, double coincidence of wants is an essential feature in a barter system. But in modern economy, where money is in use, money eliminates the need for double coincidence of wants. Now, the shoemaker will not look for the farmer who will buy his shoes and at the same time sell his wheat. What he will do is that he has to find a buyer for his shoes. From the buyer, he will exchange his shoes for money. Then from that money, he will buy wheat. So what we see here is that money acts as an intermediate in the exchange process. Hence, money is called a medium of exchange. In the slide, you can see the first, the barter transaction. The barter transaction would look like this where C1 is one commodity and C2 is another commodity. Then with the use of money, the transaction would look like this, where M is money. So money acts as an intermediate in the exchange process. I hope you have understood double coincidence of wants and the role of money as a medium of exchange. Is there any other role of money? Yes. Money also works as a unit of account. Though this is beyond the scope of your syllabus, but still for 
the sake of your knowledge i am telling you the value of every good and service is measured in terms of money for example we say a piece of chocolate costs 10 rupees a bottle of coke costs 20 rupees therefore one coke is equal to two chocolates knowing the value or price of a good in terms of money it enables both the supplier and the purchaser of the good to make decisions about how much of the good to supply and how much of the good to purchase in the case of shoe manufacturer the question may arise how much we for a pair of shoes let us now switch over to another easy topic modern forms of money modern forms of money include currency that is paper notes and coins currency is a medium of exchange for goods and services in short it is a money in the form of paper notes and coins before the introduction of coins a variety of objects was used as money for example indians used grains and cattle as money thereafter came the use of metallic coins coins made of metals like gold coins silver coins copper coins you can see coins in the slide you can see early punj marks coins you can see the coins used during gupta period you can see tughlaq coins you can see gold mohar from akbar's reign and you can also see one modern coin now you will notice that these gold and silver coins are not used today but still they are valued a lot you must have observed people buying silver coins on the day of dhanteras people also buy gold coins from their savings and keep at home even when not in use they have a value of their own their own intrinsic value today if you have a 24 karat 1 gram gold coin it means you have around 6000 rupees with you what is astonishing here is that modern currency is made of neither gold nor silver nor any other precious metal our notes are made of cotton then why it is accepted as a medium of exchange it is accepted because the currency is authorized by the government of the country in india currency notes are issued by the reserve bank of india on behalf of the central government as per indian law no other individual or organization is allowed to issue currency moreover the law legalizes the use of rupee as a medium of payment that cannot be refused in settling transactions in india no individual in india can legally refuse a payment that is made in rupees hence rupees is widely accepted as a medium of exchange the other form in which people hold money is as deposits with banks at a point of time people need only some money for their day to day needs for instance people who receive their salaries at the end of each month have extra cash at the beginning of the month what do people do with this extra cash they deposit it with the banks by opening a bank account in their name now it is things are changing the salary goes to the bank itself the employer deposits the salary of his employees in the bank in their bank accounts the employees withdraw the money according to their needs when you deposit your money in the banks banks pay interest on your deposits nowadays it is around 3% simple interest in this way people's money is safe with the bank and in addition it earns them an interest banks also allow people to withdraw their money as and when they require since the deposits in the bank account can be withdrawn on demand these deposits are also called demand deposits demand deposits also offer another facility it allows us to make payments by check instead of cash see this is a check book this is a check book containing 20 leaflets of checks 
this is how a check looks so what is a check open page number 41 and underline a check is a paper instructing the bank to pay a specific amount from the person's account to the person in whose name the check has been made you can see an example that I will explain you just now a shoemaker Salim has to make a payment to the leather supplier Prem Kumar so instead of giving him cash Salim gives this check to Prem Kumar here you can see the signature of Salim here you can see pay the person who is to be paid the money his name is written here Salim is saying pay to Prem Kumar how much so the amount to be paid is written here rupees this means that the shoe manufacturer Salim is instructing his bank to pay 57,000 rupees to the leather supplier Prem Kumar then the date of issue of the check is given here now the leather supplier takes this check and deposits in his own account in the bank the money is transferred from one bank account to another thus the transaction is complete without any payment of cash i hope you understood how check is being used for the payment purpose so the facility of check against demand deposits makes it possible to settle payment without the use of cash since demand deposits are accepted widely as a means of payment along with currency they constitute money in modern economy nowadays even if you buy a commodity you don't need even the cash transactions have become cashless payment is being made digitally in banks also cash is transferred from one account to another digitally long queues of parents waiting for their turn to pay the school fee is history now you pay your school fees directly by transferring the amount to the school account through some app in your mobile these are some real life situations that i am discussing so let me recap a few things very quickly one why rupee is accepted as a medium of exchange in India? Because it is authorized by the government of India. Nobody can refuse to accept the payment which is made in rupees. 2. What are the advantages of deposits with banks? First, your money is safe. Second, it earns you interest. Third, it allows you to make payment through check. 3. How is check useful to us? It allows us to directly settle the payment without the use of cash. So we finish our class here. Let us see the possible questions from the topic covered now. What do you mean by double coincidence of wants? How is money used as a medium of exchange? Explain with examples. How does money solve the problem of double coincidence of wants? Explain with examples. Explain demand deposits as a form of money. Why is rupees accepted as a medium of exchange in India? What are the advantages of deposits with the banks? What is a check? How is it useful? I hope you understood the lesson properly. In the next class, we will see loan activities of banks. Till then, keep reading. Have a nice time. Thank you.